Hello again, minions. It's Wheezy. Welcome to another weekly wrap up. This week, I'm going to talk to you about what you missed on the channel this week, which was a good week, as well as let's discuss realism versus arcade style fun in shooter games and which we prefer. Let's just go have a talk about it. All right, minions, let's get right into it. This past week uh, has been an exciting one with the Battlefield 2042 beta being out, as well as it being the week following the second weekend of the Halo Infinite tech preview. Um, so the first video that was posted last week was actually a, was it my second? No, it was like my third Halo Infinite tech preview video. Um, where it was kind of my breakdown and summary of the game is with a lot of like, I thought good clips from my playtime during that. Um, the short answer was Halo Infinite is amazing and awesome and I'm really looking forward to it. Um, so here is a clip if you missed that video. One. So Halo has gotten in this weird place where they're like releasing, where they've released like one game per console generation <laughs> since Bungie left. And uh, so this feels like an opportunity for Halo to have a comeback, right? Halo 5, I just like, it was completely under the radar. Halo 4, just especially after Halo 3 and Reach, was just kind of like, what the fuck is this? Uh, this feels like it could really be a real return to form and Halo could really come back to the forefront. Especially since the multiplayer is going to be free to play. So you don't have to buy Halo to play the multiplayer. It's going to be free to play. We'll, we'll touch back on that again in a second. Yeah, so if you are interested in Halo Infinite at all, definitely go check that video out, as well as my other Halo Infinite videos that I've posted. And there will be at least a couple of more uh, going forward here before the game comes out in December. Um, a game that was on my radar but wasn't super high on my excitement list that has jumped up uh, at, in my level of excitement. I'm just, I'm really excited for Infinite to come out. Um, after that, I posted a Halo a Halo, a Battlefield 2042 uh, early access beta video, which was my first two games of Battlefield 2042. Um, for those of you guys who've been around a while, you know that when I start a new game, whether it be a beta or a full release, I tend to like to post my first game or two to just get I like raw impressions. I live commentate it just so you guys can see me experiencing it. Um, so I did that for Battlefield 2042 beta. Um, I enjoyed it. I think it's, uh, I'm excited for that game coming out too. Versus the other betas, betas, we've seen recently the Vanguard beta and the Halo Infinite tech preview. The Battlefield 2042 beta was a very, very much a beta. It was actually quite rough, um, but very enjoyable. So if you missed that, then go and check out this clip and then go check out that video. Oh, that's a vehicle, shit. Oh, so you can slide to prone if you hold the slide stick. That's cool. You tap it, you slide to kneeling. You hold it, you slide to prone. Need cover. Shit, more guys. There's like three guys up here. I should not push this fight. Let's see if I can get some cover. Get down, bitch. Slide out of there. All right, have I got... Oh, I've got armor. How does that work? Oh, put... Oh, put armor in. What does that do? What the shit? Oh, God. Sniper, and a guy close, and armor. Shit. Little glitchy there. Ah, oh, too many. Too many. Okay, so after that, I posted more Battlefield. <laughs> and going forward, you can expect some more Battlefield for a while until I churn through this content that I've got, as well as some other stuff that I've got in the works, which we'll discuss in my last topic. Um, 
But after the, the my first couple of games, I posted a short, uh, which was a minute in the life of a Battlefield bot. I actually recorded two longer clips where I kind of ended up in a game where... Uh, a lot of the players dropped, or maybe it was mostly an empty game, so I ended up in a couple of lobbies that were mostly bots. So I kind of followed the bots for a little bit to see what they do, how they act, you know. And uh, there was one clip that I took out of one of those uh, longer sections that I thought was particularly entertaining. Uh, and as has become tradition here on the weekly wrap up, I'm just going to show you that entire short. Some sort of new only in Battlefield moment that included a bot and a rocket explosion. Absolutely fantastic. Um, expect more stuff like that just as you get into more Battlefield. Like, Battlefield has so many great moments. Um, the next video that I posted was a kind of a first thoughts, impressions, explanation, overview of the new plus system in Battlefield 2042, which is the infield weapon modification system where you can swap out attachments on all of your weapons during the match, like in real time um, as you go. Uh, I personally really enjoyed it. Um, I talk about uh, pros, cons, you know, early impressions considering it's not the final version of the game. Uh, I think it's an interesting video. It's one of the things that I was most, uh, that I enjoyed most about the beta, about the new Battlefield 2042 system. So here's a clip from that video. Right. In the same way that if you have an SMG, you wouldn't set it up for a longer range encounter, right? Because the chances of you utilizing that are so slim that you wouldn't build the weapon to do that just in case that one instance comes up because you're more likely to encounter the other seven instances where it being a close range weapon matters. The plus system allows you to shift that on the fly so you can take an assault rifle, which I would always run with a low, low magnification dot, right? Or iron sights if I have to make a trade off on which attachments I'm choosing. And I can, if someone's out at range and I've got an assault rifle, like I can't just pick up a sniper rifle or a marksman rifle, right? I can throw on an ACOG, switch to a longer barrel, put it on single fire mode, and I can engage at longer distances. I absolutely love that. And then if I get that kill, or if I draw attention and someone pushes up on me, slap the dot back on, go back to full auto, close range barrel, and then use it like it's intended. Like, I absolutely love that. As you may notice, this is the first video I'm creating other than my initial, like, two games of Battlefield 2042 because I feel like this feature is probably my favorite thing about the game so far. Other than, yes, the game. Yeah, be sure to go and check all of that stuff out, as usual. Links for all of this will be included below. Um, so I want to talk about simulation versus arcade for a couple of reasons because, one, for PlayStation Plus this month, um, they released Hell Let Loose as a free game, so I was able to play some of that. It's been on PC for a while, but now there's a console version. I was able to get it for free by my, through my PlayStation Plus subscription, um, which, by the way, if you guys want a discount on that, I've got a video for that. Just go search it on my channel. And, I mean, it, it's got me thinking as I'm looking through this content. I'm going to be posting a video from Hell Let Loose. And, uh, and with the new Battlefield um, kind of embracing more... Uh, of sort of an arcade feel, sort of, um, in that they're de-emphasizing the role-based uh, nature of Battlefield a little bit and the ability to kind of dynamically change your weapon attachments as you run through uh, a, a single match is quite unrealistic um, from, from a practicality standpoint. Um, but it, it got me thinking about, is gameplay and enjoyment more important than realism and simulation 
I suppose that depends largely on the game that you're playing. If you're playing a simulation game like Hell Let Loose, then obviously they're going for realism. That may take precedence. If you're going for a more widely uh, marketed game like a Call of Duty or a Battlefield uh, or a, a sci-fi sci shooter like Halo, clearly gameplay, aesthetic, things like that um, take precedence. So for me personally, uh, I do enjoy a good simulation game um, and a decent simulation shooter here and there as kind of a nice little like break of pace, like more immersive, bigger challenge. But on a day-to-day -day basis, when I want to relax, unwind, have fun, play a game, a shooter, I want it to be a good balance of something that feels immersive and I can, you know, sus suspend some of my disbelief to get immersed in that world, but also has features that just make it a lot of fun. And what I found was like for Battlefield, the plus system made the game a lot of fun. I, it, was a, it was an addition that I really enjoyed, even though it's probably one of the least realistic things uh, Battlefield has ever added uh, to a game, which I guess is saying something. <laughs> Not counting cosmetics. Let's go ahead and just exclude that <laughs> and say that this is from a, from a real, like, tactical in the field standpoint you're not gonna be swapping out weapon attachments and barrels and optics on the fly out of your backpack which is not gonna happen um but i think it's an interesting and i i am have always been and will continue to be a fun and gameplay over realism and simulation even though like i said i'm a fan of simulation stuff especially when it comes to, like driving games i love simulation driving games they're my absolute favorite but if they're not fun <laughs> then what's the point of playing a game? What do you guys think? Do you think the new simulation, do you think a simulation style is preferable to an arcade style? Do you mind? Do you think there's a limit? Do you think there's a balance between what's realistic and what's simulation in games? What do you guys think? What are your preferences? Go check out the stuff there. I'm going to keep this one nice and short. I'm getting better at keeping my weekly wrap-up short. So I'm going to go ahead and end it here, and I will see you guys in the next one. See ya.